Hello, high school basketball fans, and welcome to Minster High School, where we got non-conference action between the Western Buckeye League and the Midwest Athletic Conference. It's the St. Mary's Rough Riders, under the leadership of Coach Dan Hegemeyer, coming into today's contest with a record of 12 and 6, versus the Minster Wildcats, under the direction and leadership of Michael McClurg, with a record of 12 and 7. I'm Dave Bowen. My wingman today is none other than the Kenton Wildcat, the Ashland Eagle, the big teddy bear, Darren Gilbert. <laughs> We've got ourselves a good one, Darren. Darren, let's look at some keys. First and foremost for St. Mary's, what's it going to take for them to be successful well, today? Well, I, th I think you've got to utilize your two bigs to start with. Seat lead on your senior leadership with Turner and Angstman. Uh, I think it's important to get them going. Also, you gotta you gotta take advantage of the guard play. You know, you've got to maintain the basketball. You can't turn it over. Coach Hagemeyer made a great couple comments to you in pregame, stating the fact that he was in a lot of his games. It's just they didn't finish, and uh, it's going to be important to play here. You know, on the road to get off to a good start for St. Mary's to to. Uh, hang in there and, and, and try to get a W tonight after coming off a tough loss last night. A tough loss last night to Elida, 58 to 49. Minster, head coach Michael McClurg, keys for the Wildcats, the 12 and seven Wildcats, Darren. I think number one, you gotta keep it rolling. You know, they've, they've been very successful the last 10 or 12 games, uh, coming off a big win last night. Uh, you know, they're down a couple bodies tonight, but you know, the game I've seen, Dave, they've really utilized their bench, and they don't miss a beat, you know, coming off. The kids that come off the bench, even though he's shuffling it around a little bit. Uh, it's going to be the guard play, and then obviously you're going to have to get your bigs to, to, to come out and guard Turner and Anxman because those are two kids that are really not uh, five men but stretch four. So I think, uh, you know, it, those are the keys to both teams, and I think it's going to be a heck of a non-conference battle as tomorrow. You know, the chips are going to fall where they may tomorrow because tomorrow's the draw for the uh, OHSA tournament. It's Minster at St. Mary's. Our JV game tonight was won by Minster 46 to 38. Darren Gilbert, Dave Bowen will be back with starting lineups. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Minster High School. Well, tonight's contest between the St. Mary's Rep Riders and the Minster Wildcats getting ready for starting lineups. The St. Mary's Rep Riders, the starters are as follows. Number one, a junior, six foot three, Noah Payne. He averages nine points per game. Also, a senior at six foot one, number five, a guard, Cobain Owens, averages seven points per game. Number 13, junior, six foot one forward, Alex Haney averages six points per game. Jace Turner, also a starter for the Rough Riders. Number 22, a post player at six foot seven, can step out and hit the three. Second leading score at 13 points per game. And then the leading score for the Rough Riders, number 24, senior, six foot seven forward, Evan Angstman for the Minster Wildcats. Your starting lineup. Includes junior, six foot three, number zero, a forward, Ian Homan. He averages four points per game. Cole McClurg will also be starting this evening. The sophomore six footer, number one guard, averages eight points per game. The leading score for Minster, number four, junior guard, stands at six foot tall, Cole Richard. And number 14, Noah Schwederman, a sophomore, six foot four. Number 14 forward, Noah Sweetman, averages three points per game. And then completing the starting lineup for Minster, stands six foot eight, a sophomore, number 42, Cole Albers, averages nine points per game. St. Mary's, they score 60 points per game, they give up 50. Minster, they average 55 points per game, and they also allow their opponents to score 50 as an average. Darren? We've got the starting lineups in now and ready to roll. It's the MAC, it's the Western Buckeye League, it's Dan Hegemeyer, Michael McClurg, 
It's going to be a good one. Well, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a physical game, that's for sure, because you know what style the MAC plays. You know what the style the WBL plays. And they're going to knock heads tonight, so to speak, on this floor. I was just listening to pregame the officials over 94 years of varsity basketball experience. And I think they said they were coming from down south of Dayton. Is that correct? That's correct. And our officials are Brandon Kidwell, Mark Salomon, and Scott Wyckoff, the three officials and veteran crew here, as Darren said, south of the University of Dayton, where the state tournament will be held here in just a few short weeks. It's the stretch drive of the regular season tournament draw tomorrow. Let's tip it off. Let's get after Let's it. Let's get after it, partner. And the tip is going to be controlled and nicely done. He comes back in and reestablishes position. Minster has it. They go down low right away, and it's an errant pass and a turnover. Cole Albers had the ball down on the block, didn't go up with it there, and tried to find a teammate. Yeah, I think he results. got a little bit too deep down on the block there and took the angle away and, and tried to force it out the backside. You know, really an unfortunate turnover because, you know, they had a point blank shot or at least an attempt. Ball's into Jace Turner. Nice footwork in there. Short on the shot. Tips it out. St. Mary's with the offensive board. And that's number five. Cobain Owens picks up the first field goal of the game. He averages seven points per game. Gets on the board early. Minster with the basketball. They bring it across the timeline in the hands of Noah Schwederman. Now to Holman, goes out to Albers. Swings it over to the left side. Now back over here to Cole Richard. We're right down here on the floor. We've got a great view, just the officials in our view a little bit, bit create some situation, but there's a steal for St. Mary's. Attacking the rack is Alex Haney, and there's contact. Yeah, I think that was Schwederman, got him with the body. That's what the official signaled. The, the block was clean. Noah Schwedeman picks up his first foul. Team's first going to the free throw line. Alex Haney, he's a 56% free throw shooter for the Rough Riders. Left-hander eyes and flies. Comes up short. Backed away from that line a little bit, Darren. You got to stay right on yeah, there. Yeah, you got to stay on the line. Get up on your toes like a rocker step. Go up on your toes back to your heels. Shoot Bend it, them knees. And shoot it with confidence and see if he makes the adjustment. And he does. Picks up the second free throw. One for two for Haney. Holman with the basketball. A storyline for Minster. Two of their starters, Brogan Steffi, who averages 12 a game, and James Niemeyer averages eight a game, out with injuries. Yeah, that's an unfortunate piece because Steffi is, you know, he struggled with injuries throughout this year and last year, both football and basketball. And Hopefully it's nothing serious and they can get them back within the next week or so. Cole McClurg comes up empty from the th three-point line. And Evan Aksman does not come up empty from the three-point line. He drills it. The three-point line, our sponsor, Burke Petroleum, they're offering a steal right here and another block. But I a think foul that's a called. body foul, too. Yep. I think they got Schwederman again. If that's the case, that's his second. And with the injuries. Here the, comes Schmeezing. Yep, the depth is not what Coach McClurg usually has. He's going to have to go to the bench, going to bring in Connor Schmeezy at the free throw line, the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line for his third and fourth free throws is Alex Haney, Lee's famous recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken where home style happens here. Again, Haney goes one for two. Looked good on that release there, nothing but net. And the lead is St. Mary's seven to nothing. Another turnover. It's a scramble down there. We're gonna have a jump ball. So the St. Mary's defense creating some situations where Minsters turn the ball over. Yeah, they're trying to get some leadership. I know, uh, Ian Holman, the 6'3 junior, he's trying to motivate the kids to get them ready to play. He's he's one of those kids that bring the energy both ends of the floor, and he's used to playing the sub. Now he's got to start tonight, and he's trying to get them fired up to play. Alex Haney penetrates, kicks it back out to Evan Inksman. Inksman loses the handle, but 
And it is over. That's a back. great call right there. Yep. Possession was in St. Mary's hands. Good perimeter defense by Cole Alberts creates that turnover. Minster with an opportunity now on offense with 5.30 to go in our first quarter. Again, our scoreboard sponsor, Ultimate Outdoor. In the corner, number one with a Burke Petroleum 3 doesn't go. That was Cole McClure going the other direction. And St. Mary's attacking the racket oh, yeah. transition, Darren. Yeah, they're making their defense, their offense, and making it a full court game. And I think they got, appeared to be schmeezing, and I think we're going to get the young man back on the line for free throw number five and six. Yes, Connor schmeezing picks up his first personal. Alex Haney, see if he can connect on this first one. Shoot the first one with the confidence he has with the second, and he does a nice job there. Alex Haney on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Again, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. I've been to Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Have not hit the one in St. Mary's. They well, they're busy every time I go through. <laughs> there you go. He does make both free throws. Minster with the basketball. Holman takes it across the timeline. Or excuse me, that's Connor They got Schmeese, him for a travel. And it's another turnover. So here in the early going, the absence of Brogan Steffi and James Niemeyer definitely apparent. Yeah, you know, and St. Mary's does a pretty good job. I know a lot of coaches don't teach the reach from behind, but they've been very successful right now. If you pound the basketball high, you know, you're giving somebody an opportunity to reach around you and get deflections, and that is exactly what St. Mary's doing. In the post is Jace Turner again. Excellent footwork. Pretty move. <laughs> For both of us being postmen and postmen coaches, you're right, that was pretty. And Coach Michael McClurg is going to take a timeout. We'll take one with him. It's St. Mary's 11, Mr. Zero. You're watching it on WOSN. We're back at Minster High School, our scoreboard sponsor, Ultimate, Ultimate Outdoor. Bring a resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. 11 to 0, Darren. Coach McClurg takes the timeout. What's the theme of the discussion in that timeout? Stop the players? bleeding. Find a way to stop it. you got to take care of the basketball, number one. And number two, you keep turning the basketball over. Number one, it's only not only a turnover, it's an opportunity for them to score at the other end of the floor. The name of the game is shot opportunities. When you turn it over, you can't run anything. So I'm sure it's just to settle them down. Settle them down. And St. Mary's has had outstanding perimeter defense, and they have done it without fouling. No fouls for St. Mary's thus far in the game and they're gonna show full court pressure right away on this inbound from Ian Homan. The officiating crew having a discussion, talking to our Jacob O'Neill underneath the basket with his camera. I think they're gonna ask him to move and we'll do whatever they ask us to do. We're just happy to be here. Absolutely. Josh Clune. He's like, Josh, where, James, like where, we, where do you want me to go? Yeah, Josh Clooney, the athletic director here at Minster. Very hospitable. We're right down here at half court. Excellent vantage point. Cole McClurg now bringing the basketball across the timeline for Minster. Goes to Holman at the elbow. He looks to attack. And he double dribbles the basketball. So another turnover. The only positive about that one, Darren, it's a dead ball turnover. Yeah. Mister able to set their And defense. I couldn't see if I was obstructed from the official. Evidently, he must have stuck it on his hip or was not a continuous dribble. So St. Mary's with the basketball. Evan Engsman up top spins, looks to attack, draws contact. And he's going to go to the Lee's famous I recipe. I think they got Chicken. Holman on that one, partner. They did. Ian Holman, that's his first. Team's fourth. Minster has six turnovers up to this point in time in the basketball game. And Evan Eggsman going to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line where he connects on the first one. Eggsman, an 82% free throw shooter, leads the Rough Riders in that category. He buries both of them. 
McClurg with the basketball, the coach's son. Passes over to Cole Richard. Minster's got to find a shot, let alone a made shot. They just have not been able to get many shots up. Unable to connect there is Cole Richard. St. Mary's setting up the half-court offense. Well, part of that problem is, too, is, is St. Mary's is doing such a good job with pressure on the ball and also denying the wings. If you force them outside the three-point line to start your offense, you're doing a heck of a job. And another foul called, and I believe we're going to go to the free throw line because that is the fifth foul for Minster here in the first quarter. I think they got uh, Schmeezing right there, and that's his second, I believe, partner. It is. Connor Schmeezing picks up his second. And Evan Engsman, as we said, leading free throw shooter at 82% on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Opportunity to go four for four here in the first quarter for Engsman from the line, and he does so. Coach Hegemeyer preaches defense. His team is coming out and showing him, but right there, a nice dish from McClurg to Cole Albers to get Minster on the board. Yeah, they needed that one in the worst way right now, partner. You know, if you're St. Mary's, you got to love the start you've had. If you're Minster, you just got to scratch and claw and take it one possession at a time. Aksman from three from the Burke Petroleum three-point line doesn't score it. And I believe we have a technical foul. Yeah, I think they got it's on the Minster bench. Yep, I think Coach McClurg picked that one up. And he's going to have to sit the remainder of the contest. Trying to fire his kids up a little bit here. Evan Aksman going to go to the line and shoot those free throws. Not the start, obviously, that Minster wants and Coach McClurg wants, but he's trying to rally his troops a little bit here. He did not. Well, we both know from being former coaches, when you don't play well, you got to start pushing buttons. Yes. And he felt like that was the button to push. Yep. The P-A-N-I-C, the panic <laughs> yeah. button, you know. Yeah. But, no, I mean, to get his kids motivated, to let him know that, that he's got their back, to, to, do the players have his? Great point, Darren. Once the technical was called, he went to the bench and sat down. He didn't continue to converse with the official. So, see if the Minster Wildcats. Good can, box out there yep. by Homan right yep. there, working his tail off to get that defensive rebound. Agree. See if they can step up a little bit here. Nice screen there by Homan. Nice tip and almost steal by Alex Haney. Mr. Haney's had him a whale of a first quarter. I was just going to go there and talking with Coach Hegemeyer. I asked him, who's your maximum role player? Who's the kid who does the dirty work, the grunt work, that doesn't show up on the stat sheet all the time? Who Number 13. Yes. That's exactly what he said. Alex Haney. Minster with the basketball. Connor Schmeezing into Holman, and he loses it. McClurg lost it, and Holman gets after it. We have a jump ball situation. Going to stay with the Wildcats. Boy, that kid plays so hard for Minster. You know, right now he's checking at his, his lower lip. Yeah. Haney getting a quick blow for the Rough Riders. McClurg inbounding it, finds none other than Ian Homan on the pick the picker under out of bounds play. Homan picks up his first field goal, second field goal for the Wildcats here in the first quarter. And then he's going to commit a foul at the other end. And with St. Mary's being in the bonus, if you will, with the five foul rule, that's going to put Jace Turner on the free throw line. He's a 75% free throw shooter. Yeah, that's Holman second two, partner, so they're mounting for the Wildcats. Holman unable to connect on the first one. Excuse me, Jace Turner. Well, we both know that Minster doesn't have a senior on this ball club, but he's, you know, he's finding his leaders. You know, this is the ideal time to find your leadership. Great point, Darren Gilbert. Minster got a claw and scratch and be one unit here. Almost a turnover. Got to find some positives here to close out the first quarter. Fight their way back into this contest here in the early going. Great nice back backdoor cut. backdoor cut, yes. Give the assist to Noah Schwederman. Give the bucket to Cole McClurg. 
That cuts the lead to 11. And that's got to help Minster feel a little bit better right now. Got to stick some defense on these Rough Riders. Yeah, this is where Holman's got to be smart on the interior. He can ill afford to get three. Turner turns it over. Here comes Minster in transition. McClurg draws contact. And whenever you attack the basket, good things happen. And the Minster faithful giving the old Bronx cheer as that's the first foul on St. Mary's in the first quarter. But to be quite honest, Minster's had a hard time being aggressive offensively. They've been on their heels. There haven't well, been Well, they've fouls. been on their heels, and they've been pushed out so far on the court. That was on Steger, partner, his first, team's first. Brennan Steger with one in the game. Cole McClurg makes the first free throw. He's a 71% free throw shooter. Second one's up, and it's in. So the lead is now cut to nine. A little bit of a momentum shift. Yeah, so they're, they're chipping away at it. Get a stop, get a bucket. Hanksman into Turner. Defended by Holman. And there's another turnover. So Minster with an opportunity to cut into this lead some more here in the first quarter. Wide open is Andrew Kettner. What a good look. Yeah, doesn't go. Cobain Owens with the basketball. Double screen up top for Aixman. Almost another turnover. Deflection. Aixman gets it back, attacking the rim. He loses it. Yeah, I think they were asking if the ball went off his knee. St. Mary's is going to maintain possession of the basketball. Our instant replay sponsor again, Road State College. Spring 2024 registration is now open. America's play under out of bounds. Looking for a shot in the corner. Doesn't go. They don't get it. Inksman with the basketball up top. Very agile for being six foot seven inches tall. Yeah. And it looks like Coach Hagemeyer is going to say, let's go with one unless we get a 90% shot. And they do because Cobain Owens is able to penetrate straight line drive and draws contact. He's going to go to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. Yeah, that was on Cole Richard. Got beat off the drive. Fortunate there that he did not get called for an intentional foul, partner. You're right. Because you have to show some sign of going for the basketball. And, you know, very, very fortunate. But what a heck of a nice drive there by uh, Mr. Owens to the rim. Cobain Owens, two for two from the line. Second leading free throw shooter for St. Mary's at 77%. Minster looking for a last shot of the quarter. It's a kick out. It's a three-point attempt. Doesn't go for Cole Richard. Contact inside, and there's a foul. Yeah, I think that Angstman with the hold. Good job there by Albers going up high and securing it and keeping it high. 7.8 seconds. Again, be a world of good medicine if Minster could get a bucket here to close out the quarter. Inbound to Albers. Richard to McClurg. He draws contact, and there's a foul with two seconds. They got Owens from the reach from behind. Cobain Owens picks up his first. So with two seconds, now the ball comes clear out here to 28 feet. I wish it was at the free throw line extended. This is a new rule most people don't remember or realize. In and out. They're going to count it if it goes. It does not go from the Burke Petroleum three-point line. And that's the end of our first quarter on the Ultimate Outdoor Scoreboard. Your score, St. Mary's 19, Mr. 8. You're watching it on WOSN. Welcome back to Minster High School. Our three-point sponsor for today's game is Burt Petroleum. Burt Petroleum is now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burt Petroleum, dependable, available, 800-776-3097. He's Darren Gilbert. I'm Dave Bowen. Some first quarter thoughts, stats. Darren, what do you think? Probably the big one that sticks out. St. Mary's been to the line 16 times and converted 12 for 75%. 
Minster's two for two. That's a difference of 10 points. And what's our score? 11. Yeah, 16 free throws in the quarter. Coach Hegemeyer's got to be very pleased with that. And on the converse, that might be one of those reasons why we uh, saw Coach McClure get a technical in the first quarter because maybe he thought things just weren't going his way from the stripes. But, again, we talked about it. Until the last three minutes of the first quarter, his team wasn't really attacking the basket. Correct. They have since that point. Yeah. And they have been able to collect some fouls on St. Mary's and get some good looks. Yeah, that's Owen's second. He's got to be careful. Remember, they're very limited with who personnel, that being the, the Rough Riders. Yeah, they typically only go about six deep. And they have the basketball on offense. Turner with the ball. Inksman from three, doesn't go. Minster there to clean it off the glass. Good job there by the Wildcats, cleaning it up like you said, off the glass, Give them a one and done opportunity. There's a steal. That's what we saw in the early part of the first quarter. Inksman goes coast to coast, LA to Boston for the bucket. Boy, he's exceptionally long with those arms, made a great deflection to start with and then finished it at the rim. Inksman with his ninth and 10th point of the game. From deep for Minster, that's Cole Richard, doesn't get it. Here come the Rough Riders again. Iron Man six for them. Inksman looking to put a move on. Almost loses it, but they maintain possession. Turner inside, nice baby hook. Jace Turner with the bucket. Yeah, no hesitation, went directly to the left shoulder, protected it, got it high and soft, nice little jump hook. Yeah, there's, there's a post coach over there somewhere on that staff doing some great things with these St. Mary's Rough Riders on the block, especially Jace Turner. Well, you know, these kids are both three-year starters. They played, got an opportunity to play with Mr. Buckeye there, Mr. Parks, and now it's their turn to, to lead the, the ball club. Cole McClurg triggering the inbound, goes to Noah Schwederman. Now it's Cole Richard. Back to McClurg. He looks to go baseline. Cole Albers inside, and it's stolen. Nicely done there by Cobain Owens. He, he looks to go coast to coast. And there's a foul under the basket. The other glaring stat partners, Minsters, turned it over eight times in the game. Cole Albers with the personal. You're right. Turnovers are kill you. And that's what's happening right now as far as Minster's concerned. Well, missed opportunities offensively and also turn it over and given more offensive possessions for the other ball club. Holman bodying up Turner. He fades a little bit there. Doesn't go for him. Good job by Holman yes. walling up. Minster down in their transition offense. Everybody moving. They leave the, the ball handler, and McClure can't make him pay for it. Loose oh, great ball. hustle yep. by the Wildcats. Cole Richard. Richard with the miss, and Turner with the rebound. And Coach Dan Hegemeyer is going to take a timeout. Things got a little ragged there. Coach Hegemeyer wants to talk to his squad. We'll take a break as well. 23 to 8 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard in favor of the Rough Riders. Back to Minster High School. Our corner sponsor for today's game is Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride means best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and best service you can count on. Pantry Pride. Darren Gilbert, Coach Hegemeyer, 38 years in the business, over 600 wins. Why did he take that time out? I think you wanted to get him some water. <laughs> you know, yeah. I think you know. He, I think he wants to get those kids an opportunity to catch your breath. And probably for him to get a drink of water too. Yeah, even though we both the have man been never this sits business. down, yeah, does he? We've been around this business for a long time. He still has forgotten more about basketball than yeah, we've ever learned. That's true. There's that's a, Owens. Cobain Owens with the three out of the timeout. That's how you draw it up. It's a three point for Owens from our three point sponsor, Burke Petroleum. And there's another turnover on Minster. 
That's number nine. Our stats being collected here unofficially, but they do a great job. Brad oh, Hughes. Absolutely. Brad Hughes and Kent Ralston. Thank along you for very the much. Yep. Making us look good. There's a three-point shot from deep by Noah Payne. Doesn't go. There's the workhorse for St. Mary's. Yep, Haiti. Everybody working hard. Turner unable to get the shot inside. Holman with the rebound. McClurg with the basketball. They like to run their offense to the left quite a bit, does Minster. They come back to the right that way. Schwedeman gets it out to Holman. Yeah, that's a great point because usually most teams are what? Right hand. Right hand predominant. Yep. yep. Cole Richard with the basketball. Holman sets a screen. A little switch action there by St. Mary's. Yeah, St. Mary's defense has just been outstanding here today. There's a miss and a rebound and a breakout. Nicely done. Alex Haney with the bucket. Aksman with the assist off the rebound toss out. Good block there by. Yeah, Schwedeman tried to score it, couldn't get it done. Good hustle by Homan. Appeared to be Jace Turner on the rejection. Yeah, Turner and Aksman, you get by one, you've got the other one coming. Yeah, yeah into they're, your both, they're both 6 7 and they're both exceptionally long. Brennan Steger with the basketball now for St. Mary's just coming in off the bench. Noah Payne looking high low. Turner doesn't see Aksman. They reverse it. Simple offense, but effective. Oh, yeah, if you set solid screen, somebody's going to get open. We could get into a discussion about screening and illegal and legal screens and how it's taught or not taught. That's Pretty Inks, move. Yep, Inksman gets to the bucket again. Really solid first step attacking the glass. A 22-point lead now for St. Mary's. And Minster's going to take a timeout. Full timeout for Minster. We'll take one with them. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Minster High School. Coach McClure takes that time out as, again, in the second quarter, St. Mary's is on an 11-0 run. Minster, you can't flaunt their effort, Darren. Oh, no. They just have not been able to put the ball in the basket. you got to tr contribute a lot of that to the defense St. Mary's has oh, played. Oh, absolutely, and it's starting right at half court right in front of us. I mean, they are right up into you and your number on your chest, and they get their hands on a lot of basketballs and deflections, and they, they're making their defense their offense tonight. It's a good ball movement. Side to side doesn't go, but Holman with the offensive rebound. He looks to attack, goes against the two six seven guys. Good reverse layup, but sure doesn't was. go. St. Mary's in transition in the corner, and then looking to attack, it's Haney. Jace Turner up fake. Again, low ball, ball snapping around. Turner inside, goes to the middle, comes back. Nice move, give Chase Turner the bucket. And again, that is as pretty as free dessert on your birthday in the post. Oh, right I love there. it, I love it, I love it. What he does really well is he checks his defense to see where the defender is, and then he reacts to what the defense gives you. Excellent. Yeah, Darren, he keeps his head up, too. He's mm -hmm. not looking down at the floor. He's trying to see what he's got. It does it stay one-on-one, -on -one or is there a double coming from a direction where he can find an open teammate? Well, and if it's a dribble he's going to take, he's going to make sure it takes him somewhere. He's just not going to put it on the floor. Very impressed. Both of us are with Jace Turner in the post. Connor Schmeezing with the basketball. They go inside to Albers. He works hard in the post, too. Kisses it off the window. Good job oh. by the big fella yes. right there, holding some patience, keeping it high, catching it high, and hitting a little kiss off the glass. Albert Albers with his second field goal of the game. Pick and roll action. Haney takes the contact and finishes it. 
Alex Haney, hoop and the harm. I believe they got uh, Albers right there. If that's the case, that's his second Alex. slew of uh, Wildcats right now with two. Alex Haney at the Lee's Famous Recipe chicken free throw line. Again, misses that free throw, does the left-hander. Minster in transition. Again, good ball movement. There's a reach, and they catch it. The foul's going to be on Noah Payne, and that's his first personal foul. Team's third for St. Mary's. So it'll be under out of bounds for the Wildcats. Alex Haney getting a well-deserved break. I was going to ask you, why is he taking him out? <laughs> He's working hard. He is working very nice play there. He brought Engsman in, and he gets the steal on the turnover. St. Mary's in transition. Pretty good job by Minster in their transition game to get back there, not giving up an easy opportunity off that turnover. Under a minute left in our second quarter. St. Mary's excellent ball movement. Four out, one in, looking for Turner in the post. Going to shoot the three from the left wing is Cobain Owens, and he's going to drill it. That's the second three for him, the Burke Petroleum three-point line. Burke Petroleum is now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Dependable and available, Burke Petroleum, 800-776-3097. Minster looks like they're going to play for the last shot. 13 seconds remaining on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard clock. Down to 10. St. Mary oh, switches yeah, their defense to 1-3-1 sure in transition. It works for them. They're going to get a look from deep off the window. Doesn't go for Cobain Owens. A lot of action in our first half. And if you're a St. Mary's fan, you're very pleased with the effort of the team on the floor today as they take a 37 to 10 lead into halftime. Our halftime sponsor, Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride means best quality beats, best value for your dollar, and best service you can count on. We'll come back to look at the numbers and some halftime thoughts after these. Welcome back to Minster High School at St. Mary's of the WBL versus Minster of the Midwest Athletic Conference. It's halftime. Our halftime sponsor, Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride means best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and best service you can count on. Our halftime score on the Ultimate Outdoor Scoreboard, St. Mary's 37, Minster 10. The individual scoring real quick for St. Mary's. Cobain Owens has 10, Alex Haney 8, Jace Turner 7, and Evan Engsman, 12. For Minster, Ian Homan has two, Cole McClurg, four, and Cole Albers, four. I'm Dave Bowen. My wingman this afternoon and this evening has been and is Darren Gilbert. Gilly, what do the numbers say, and what adjustments do you think we need to see here going into the third quarter? Well, I'll tell you, for St. Mary's, you got to look at the balance scoring, unbelievable balance scoring from what you just read off. First half unofficial numbers, St. Mary's 8 of 11 for 73% inside the arc. Outside the arc, a very respectable 3 of 8 for 38. Overall, 11 of 19 for 58%. They got to the line 17 times, 16 of those coming in the first quarter, finishing 12 of 17 for 71%. Uh, 13 rebounds, 10 defensive, 3 offensive, and only turned the basketball over three times. For Minster... They attempted four, uh, excuse me, nine twos, converting four, uh, 0 of 10 from behind the arc, finishing at four of 19 for 21%. Uh, at the charity stripe, two for two at 100%, seven rebounds, and probably the biggest kicker there is the 10 turnovers, and that, that has led to what I feel is give St. Mary's the opportunity to get this lead and put the so, so to speak, put the pedal to the metal in the second quarter and extend this to the to the 27 point lead, partner. It was an 18 to two second quarter in favors in favor of St. Mary's. And if you're Coach McClurg, you picked up a technical in the first quarter. Uh, you talked to us about depth being a concern with Steffi and Niemeyer out. 
I think you talked to your team at halftime about, hey, I'm looking for everybody to get better possession by possession. Yep. Don't look at the scoreboard. Keep playing the game possession by possession. And in the back of your mind, you're thinking, when we get those guys back, we're going to be the better for it. But right now, with that turnover, yeah, but, you know, possession. Yeah, yeah, because the third season's getting ready to come up in the tournament. You know, down 27, it's going to take – and I don't mean any disrespect to this, but they're going to have to, you know, whittle away a 27-point lead, and I don't know if that's been done, you know, at that margin. Jace Turner with a nice move in the mid-block range right there, picking up his first field goal of the second half and his eighth and ninth point. So you work on the little things and get better as the season winds down. So when that tournament time comes, you can look back on this St. Mary's game from the film and also the stats and, and build off of that. And if you're Coach Hegemeyer, one of the things he talked to us about before the game is finishing games off. Yes. Now, here we are, gentlemen, at halftime. We've got a really good lead. I don't want us to get break complacent. The yeah. yeah. Continue to focus and play top basketball, and let's put ourselves in a position where we put four quarters together. Well, and you just made a great point. I just watched him, and he said he just told his players, secure the basketball. Be strong with the basketball. He does not like anybody to get the basketball taken out of their hands, and he's constantly coaching those kids, and, 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 and it's going to pay off. He's never satisfied, and that's okay as a coach. We've both been there. Yeah, never satisfied, and then a little bit of paranoia. You don't want to see a couple buckets go down, and all of a sudden you think, we're going to give up the biggest comeback in history. Cole McClurg, the maximum role player for Minster with the bucket right there. Yeah, he's had a solid he's had a solid evening so far. Nice little dribble drive there, and I think they got Cole Richard right there. So yeah, Cole McClurg with the personal foul. Wow, his first okay. First, and it's gonna be Evan Aixman at the free throw line again. This is the first one again. Inksman, the leading free throw shooter for St. Mary's. He shot the two technical fouls, which is what you'd want to see your leading free throw shooter do and be on the line at that particular time. Goes one for two. Here comes Minster in transition. McClurg attacks, goes to Cole Alberts. Nice play. Sure Catch, was. Yeah, catches St. Mary's not ready defensively. Coach Hegemeyer is not going to be happy about that. If there's one kid on Minster's team that knows what's expected from the head coach, guess who that's going to be? <laughs> and, he, you know, he's laying it on the line because he, if he gets home tonight and he's not giving the best effort, old dad's going to have a talk with him. They have a talk. You know, there's a lot of different philosophies Absolutely. I, I like the rule of 24, whether it's the coach's son or any parent. 24 hours before you talk to your – your son or daughter about the game, unless they bring it up to you. Absolutely. That'd be a tough position, you know. I was getting ready to say down here, Albers did a really good job. You know, he didn't bail himself out by lunging. He stayed down and, and made Turner earn something right there, and he took a fade away. Tried to do the up and under, but uh, Cole did a good job staying down and walling up, so good job by that young man defensively. Minster triggers the ball in under out of bounds. Deflection right there by Jace Turner. Minster sideline out of bounds now. McClurg with the basketball, the sophomore. And again, you mentioned it in the first half. This Minster squad, not a senior on the roster. Good things now, better things down the road. Looking that way for Minster. <laughs> Cole <laughs> Richard, was, yeah. Yeah, catches all of the rib, does Cole Richard. May even get top of the backboard, but yeah. Soft little touch here, got the bucket to drop for that young man. St. Mary's, again, I've been impressed with both teams with their ball movement. The ball doesn't stick. There's a turnover, McClurg, a spark plug here in the third quarter for the Wildcats. Give him the bucket. Cuts it to 22. Yeah, gutsy effort right now by the Wildcats, especially here in this third quarter. Turner dropping the left shoulder, kicks it across. Four out, one in. Go back inside to Turner. Reads the defense, kicks out to Aixman. Deep three from Aixman, it's short. Offensive rebound by Alex Haney. There he is, the maximum role player again. 
Making them yeah, long them rebound there. right there. He, he went after it and secured it. Oh, I think they got Albert. Yep, Aikesmith does a nice job of stopping with two feet. Up fakes, draws contact. Cole Albers picks up his third personal of the game. Evan Aikesman back on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in line by Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. You know, with us both being bigs, the one thing you got to teach the bigs is you, if you're going to be a shot blocker, you have got to wait until that opponent leaves his feet and the basketball leaves his hands. Much easier said than done. Yeah, it is. You are so it is. Right. It takes a lot of repetition, a lot of coaching. That and a lot of your blocks come from help side. Correct. Not on the guy you're guarding. Got to be patient and let it happen. St. Mary's with the basketball. And I like how Coach Hageman, you know, Jace Turner could be on the block. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly Evan what Aikesman I was thinking. I'm like, block. holy smokes, he just went from one big to the other. Yeah. He's seeing the mismatches is, is what he's trying to do and, and create them for his for his ball club. And they both can shoot the three a yes. little bit. As, so you have to guard them on the perimeter. You can't sag off. St. Mary's with the basketball. Halfway through the third quarter, there's none other than Alex Haney with the baseline drive. No help side rotation, able to get to the rim and finish. Well, and St. Mary's puts you in those predicaments, so to speak. There's a rebound by Noah Payne. Aksman behind the arc, stops, then goes with the blow by. Evan Aksman picks up the two-point field goal. Great hesitation move right there. Little pause and just took it right to the rim, like you said, yeah. exploded. And that hesitation move, that is learned in June and July. Oh, absolutely. Not in December and January. You perfect it during the season, but you work on it and make it a game plan for yourself in summertime. There's St. Mary's in transition. Oh, what a move. Aksman with the strength to finish. I'd love to see that one on replay, partner, because yeah. I'm telling you, he got that one. Not only was the pass threaded on the needle, the catch and the finish with the left hand, that's a tough, tough play to make. Nice uh, pass, nice finish there by Angstman Cole with Albers, the left hand. Yeah, Cole Albers picks up his fourth foul, and Evan Angstman good from the Lee's Famous Recipe chicken free throw line. Did not anticipate where we might be heading toward a running clock in this one. Did not see that one coming, Darren, as we prep for this one. And I'll tell you what, you know, give Coach McClurk some credit here. He's over talking to, Co to uh, Cole Albers along the sidelines. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a very quiet conversation, but I'm sure it's very positive, And it's a great teaching point and teaching moment by Coach McClurk. Cole McClurg with the miss, yeah. That's Cole how Albers. you develop those relationships. Correct. Jace Turner. Nice pass there, buddy. Big to big, yep. Senior to senior. And Coach McClurg's going to call the timeout. 2 one left in your third quarter on the Ultimate Outdoor Scoreboard. It's Sixers, Lawrence, Pittsburgh 18. We'll be back after these messages. You're watching it on WOSN. Our instant replay sponsor, Road State College. Spring 2024 registration is now open. And our quarter sponsors, Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride means best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and best service you can count on. Coach McClurg takes the time out. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. St. Mary's, they have left off where they started from the first half just really executing well at both ends. Well, it's not just one player. You look at the scoreboard and your score sheet, there's three or four of them in double figures already. Aikesman with the steal, and there's a great job of sharing the basketball as Brennan Steger gives it up to a cutting Alex Haney, and he's going to go to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line as he draws the foul on number 
30 for Minster. That's Grant Larger. You know, you think about this, partner. St. Mary's plays last night, six players. They come down here tonight, have played how many? Six, six. players. Yep. And they're still getting it up and down the floor. They're still getting down in the stance. Very, very impressive. Yeah, definitely amazed that they have three league losses. The WBL is a tough league, as we well know. But, man, they are putting on a display here. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> at that draw, partner, do you want to play a St. Mary's? Not with what we're seeing today. You know, I mean, they can do it inside, outside in transition. Alex Haney with the bucket. He gets the assist from the 6'7 guy. Sure. Evan Anksman. Yeah, so versatile is St. Mary's. There's a nice play by Minster. I, I, yeah, I think that was uh, Schwederman, yep. right? No, it was Schwederman. Good picks job up. taking it to the rim there. You yep. know, let's flip it on the other side. If you're sitting at that Division Four draw, not knowing that Steffi didn't play and also Niemeyer, and you look at the scoreboard or the score in the newspaper, no box score, you know, where do you put yourself in that situation to play a team like Minster? That has won what? How many? Nine out of the last 11 games? Yep. I promise you, when the sectional time rolls around to play after the draw, these Wildcats will be ready to play. Yeah. They're, with Steffi and Niemeyer not able to play, these other guys are getting valuable minutes. Absolutely. It's, you're only making your bench deeper. And, and you're putting yourselves in situations where you can count on kids to do a certain role. Nice pass. Nice pass, as you said, from Noah Schwederman. I think they got Spencer right there with it across the arm. Or Turner, excuse me. I said Spencer. Turner. Jace Turner with the personal foul. Grant Larger on the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line here at the end of the quarter. Gets these free throws with nobody on the line. Those are tough ones to shoot at times. Comes up one for two, this Larger. And that is going to be the end of our third quarter. We'll take a break as well. It's high school basketball on WOSN. going to start the fourth quarter with St. Mary's with the basketball in the third quarter. St. Mary's outscored Minster 17 to 11 to increase their lead to 33 points. Again, 33 points and the both teams still playing very, very hard. And there's number one, Noah Payne, picking up his first field goal of the game going baseline. Cole Albers back in the game with four fouls. Well, what was more impressive was a two-foot jump stop and the explosion to the rim. He didn't flip it. He got the shoulder square and, and went right up to his face to finish that. So we are in the running clock situation now with the 35-point lead. It will stay a running clock as long as the lead stays at 30 or above. Same, yeah. same. Right now, partner, I'm sorry, St. Mary's is just shooting the, the lights out from the field on over 60%. That includes the threes. Noah Payne with the miss. All the three points shot today are sponsored by Burke Petroleum. Burke Petroleum is now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Dependable, available, 800-776-3097. We're back to a little flat 3-2 action right there. Put Anksman, appears to be him at the top. Yeah, put your 6-7 guy at the top <laughs> with the wingspan. Yeah. And put your other 6-7 on the back side, the best rebounding position. Yeah, St. Mary's, they look really wide up there. Looks like men's league on Sunday afternoon in the elementary gym. The over 60 league? <laughs> yeah. You ain't there yet, partner, but you will be. <laughs> There's a three-pointer from Cole Richard. Big shot by that young man. He's hit a, quite a few of them this year. Burke Petroleum three-pointer, you're right. That is his 36-3 of the year. He's second on the team at 38%. Uh, that was a big time finish. We were both looking at stats. Yes. 
St. Mary's in transition. Inksman with the basketball. It was Inksman because he's got 22 on the contest. Chase Turner again. Good footwork oh, inside boy. with the left hand off the left side window. Nicely done. Well, and that's where Albers, you know, he's got the four fouls. He's got to play, you know, smart, which he did. He showed the basketball IQ right there and didn't commit that fifth. There's a steal transition. Hicksman runs it down, goes to his teammate, Noah Payne. Payne with the bucket, Hicksman with the assist. I'd like to see the assist to turnover ratio for St. Mary's tonight. It's got to be exceptionally high. I've got them only unofficially, or your partners do, for five turnovers. Yeah. I'm sure they've had 15 assists. Yes, because I'd like to know how many buckets they have that don't have an assist. Right. They, they really have shared the basketball oh, effectively. Yeah. A trait of a Dan Hegemeyer team on full display this evening. Cobain Owens penetrates, draws contact, and he's going to go to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Free Throw Line. The foul is on Cole Richard. That's his second. Cobain Owens, two for two from the line thus far. Make it two for three now. The 77% free throw shooter, second on the team for St. Mary's. Got to get the legs into it if you're Mr. Owens. Coach Hagemeyer starting to get some JV players ready to come into the basketball game. St. Mary's staying in the 1-2-2, the 3-2 two, two, two zone. When the ball goes to the corner, they all turn into a 2-3. But you know what? what? Say as coaches. But, but yeah, it's like a combo zone. But you know what? How effective is that going to be down the tournament trail where you can play aggressive man-to-man -man with two six sevens and then turn around and go to a zone? Versatility, always With a length. weapon. Yep, always a weapon come tournament time. But you got to have your foundation, and we've seen it on display by St. Mary's today, both with their defense, their man pressure, a little bit of zone here, and then offensively just such outstanding ball movement, passing up good for great consistently with their shot selection. Nice ball movement right there. Nice skip pass. Albers and he flipped it to the corner and I believe that was Mr. Kettner with the three. Andrew Kettner with the Burke Petroleum three-pointer for Minster. St. Mary's working the basketball around. There's penetration again from one Cobain Owens. He does a nice job attacking. Coach Hagemeyer calling timeout simply to clear the bench. Clear the bench. A well deserved break for the Super Six of St. Mary's. I know only five of them are out there at a time, but a nice bounce back from last night's loss to Elida. Going to go one and one on the weekend. Big rebound there by Dominic Meyer. Couldn't get the put back in, but heck of an effort right there. St. Mary's with the basketball. That's Keaton Fishbaugh. Over to Mr. Brennan Fishball Steven. played really well in that JV contest yeah. for the Rough Riders. You made note of that. Some comments about how he did a nice job with his footwork yes. in the post. And again, that JV game was won by Minster, 46-38. Stigger with the turnaround. Nice Good job on the rebound. Yep, Evan Prager. Prager unable to reward himself with the hustle down the middle of the floor. Brendan Steger bringing it across the timeline. The up fake from number three. Blake Dingle died and moving the ball around again. Steger attacking the rim off the window nice and move. he scores. Good job protecting the basketball, getting it away from the defender, yet getting it up high enough and off the glass and kissing it in. I show that's the first field goal of the game for Brendan Steger. 
And a foul on the shot. Number 14 is going to go to the free throw line. That's Noah Schwederman. He's going to shoot two, and when you got the running clock, it really moves now it when you go to the free fast, throw line. It does move fast, doesn't it? That foul was on Keaton Fishball, his first. Not exactly sure who number 11 is for the Rough Riders. Do you happen to have that? Reese Howe, if we're going off the JV okay. roster, we do not have an 11 on their varsity roster. 10 seconds to play. Fishball with the rebound. And that's going to do it. A 67 to 28 victory for St. Mary's. We'll come back with some final numbers after this break. You watched it all on WOSN. Once again, welcome back to Vinster High School, where our final score in tonight's contest, St. Mary's Rough Riders in a runaway, 67 to 28. They won an each quarter, each quarter split went to the writers, and the individual scoring looks like this. For Minster, Ian Holman had two points. Cole McClurg, six. Andrew Kettner had two points. Cole Richard had seven. Noah Schwederman, two. Grant Larcher, one. And Cole Albers, four. For the victorious St. Mary's Rough Riders, Noah Payne had four. Cobain Owens, 12. Alex Haney, 13. Jace Turner, nine. Brennan Steger, two, and Evan Anksman, the six foot seven senior forward, number 24. He scored his jersey number, 24 points, Darren. You know what? If, you, if you're Coach Hagemeyer and you look at this doggone scorebook, oh my goodness, you gotta be pleased with that. Very you know, pleased. You know, after letting one slip away last night to come back over here and do what they did tonight, speaks volumes, for, you know, for the kids and for the program. and. You know, unofficially, here's what I've got for St. Mary's. You know, with the win tonight, they're improving to 13 and 6. Two point range, 20 of 27 for 74%. Three of 10 from behind the arc for an overall combined uh, percentage of 23 of 37 for 62%. 19 of 26 from the charity stripe for 73%. 19 defensive, four offensive for 23 rebounds and only turned the basketball over six times. Very efficient. Very efficient numbers. For Minster, from two-point range, they were nine of 18 for 50%, two of 18 for three for 11%. Overall, from the field, 11 for 36 for 30%, four of six at the charity stripe for 66%, 13 rebounds and probably the the, the telltale sign is the 17 turnovers. Much better job taking care of it in the second half. I believe they had 10 at halftime, so they, they trimmed that down to seven. But, uh, you know, Katie bar the door, the first half numbers, you know, did them in. And St. Mary's' ability to get it up and down the floor off of, Saint, or off of uh, Minster turnovers and creating easy opportunities, that was the telltale sign of the contest tonight, partner. Couldn't agree with you more, Darren. Both teams go one and one on the weekend, and as they look to next week, they both go back into league play. Minster will host New Bremen on Friday night, and St. Mary's will host Lima Bath. It's been a pleasure working with oh, you tonight, awesome, Darren. It's yep. been awesome. Tomorrow's a big day. Sure is. Super Bowl Sunday and also tournament, dr draw. tournament draw. So, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting. Stay tuned because the brackets will come out Monday. For Darren Gilbert. I'm Dave Bowen. We're pleased to have Jacob O'Neill and Seth Hegemeyer as our cameramen. Nick Fraley will do the editing on this one. Thank you for watching High School Basketball on WOSN. And until next time, may all of your jumpers hit nothing but the bottom of the net.